Welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to talk about WineTech IIoT device, which is CMT G01. If you see, this is a device in front of you, and this is CMT G01. This is an amazing IoT device which supports OPC UA, MQTT, and Modbus interface. So we are going to unbox this device and we see how we can use it in our processes. So when you unbox this device, you will find a manual of CMT G01 series and you will find this device. It's a very compact device and it can be very useful in the applications. So let's see, let's explore its terminals. I will open this one. So this is CMT G01 and if you see here it supports Ethernet interface LAN 1 and LAN 2 and you also have a communication port in case if your controller is not ethernet based you can use this communication this supports rs232 and rs485 and then you have 24 volt dc power connector so very compact very easy to understand and there you see some indications so you have a power indication then you have second indication to indicate which device is that i will show you that later and then you have two leds for indication of lan ports all right so the first step is we will power up this device and then we will configure it. So to power up, the, power up this device, we need to give 24 volts. So I have connected my 24 volt power supply to this port and you will see here some indication. So we have an indication of power and another indication for this device. Now the next step is we have to connect the LAN port. So we have LAN 1 and LAN 2. So by connecting to the LAN port, we can configure this device via web interface. So I'm connecting my LAN 2 or you can also do LAN 1, it's totally up to you. So let's do the LAN 1. So this LAN cable is connected. Now I'm going to open the web interface to check what is inside the device, what are the settings, how we can use it, how we can control it. And one thing you will notice once you connect the Ethernet port, you will see this blinking of light, which shows that LAN 1 is connected. All right, so let's go to the web interface and see what's inside this device. All right, now we will access the web interface. Now, if you check the user manual for this device, there are some suggestions, there are some important instructions for the connection. It says if you're connecting to Ethernet 1, if you see here, default IP, the Ethernet 1 default IP, it says DHCP. Now, what is DHCP? If you're not aware of that, it means it will look for the IP address in the network and the network will automatically assign the IP address to Ethernet port 1. Okay. And if you connect the Ethernet port 2, then the default IP is 192.168.100.1. So because I have connected to Ethernet 1 in my, in my IoT device, you can see this is LAN 1, I have set up my network configuration in a way that this device will get an IP address which I want. Okay, so I will show you in the web interface, I have this WineTech IoT, and that's the MAC address, and that's the assigned IP. So this is 192.168.1.104. This is the IP I would like to give to this device because I have various devices in my network and I find this IP address quite suitable. So it's up to you if you connect to Ethernet 1, you should know which IP address is assigned by your router or by your internet settings to this device. So once you know this IP address, you have to open this IP address in your web interface. Okay, so since I know I have reserved this IP address for this device, I'm going to the new tab and I will type 192.168.1.104. And this will open my web interface for this device. Okay, so you can see that my device name is WineTech IoT, which I have assigned. Now here you have to put the password. So I'm going to put 111, 111. This is a default password. So then you have to click login. So once you log in, you will see this window. Now in this window, you can see that Ethernet 1, which is my connected, which is connected currently to my uh, Ethernet cable and it has IP address 192.168.1.104 assigned to it. And this is the Ethernet 2. And if you want to change this IP address, you can click here and then you can change it. It's totally up to you. Similarly, if you want to change IP address of Ethernet 2, you can click this one and then you can change the IP address. So however you want, you can do that once you are in the web interface, it makes everything easy. So I will make it default. So this was a network setting, you can have it here. And once you make the changes, you have to click on save. Okay, then comes the date and time. Here you can change the date and you can change the time if you like, but accordingly, as per the current time, I think this is incorrect. So I'm going to make it 7.36 p.m. That's the correct time. That's the correct date. So I have to just click on save and this will change the settings. 
So now my date and time is updated. Then you have HMI name. You can change the name of your device. So I have written Vintech IoT, which is pretty fine. And this is the button for identification. Suppose you have 10 IoT devices linked and you want to, if you're not sure which device is which one, just click this button. And once you do that, you will see on the IoT device, you will see an LED blinking. So if I show you here, and I will click the slide, click the button, you can see that the green light is blinking. This is the indication about the device. So that's, uh, that's how you will get to know which device is linked to your web interface, just in case if you're not sure. Then you have history. In the history, if there's any backup in the device, if you want to clear that, you can select it and you can clear it. So this is the history. And then you have a very important feature, which is called email. This device can also send email. So you have to enable this feature. You have to put your server settings, your username and password, and your, the sender information as well, so that this device can send you or any person an email in case of any alarms or any emergency. So you can define in which situation you want to push an email. That is also possible. Then you have project management. In project management, you can upload the project or you can update the project. Okay, you can also restart the project and you can also have some backup projects. So this is also possible using the web interface. This thing you can also do via Easy Builder Pro software. You can download the project, but from here it is also possible. Then you have a system password. So the default password right now is six time one, but you can change it from here. So this is simple system password settings. Then you have enhanced security. Now, if you know that this device supports OPC UA communication, all right? And in OPC UA, there could be many users. So you can define the role of each user in enhanced security. This will be helpful to define the roles of particular user who is accessing OPC UA settings. All right, this is for the security feature. Easy access to is another feature by which you can access this device from remote location. So this is also possible using easy access 2.0. And then we come to OPC UA. Now OPC UA is a protocol by which you can connect this device to various controllers and that controllers could be a PLC or it could be any controller which supports the communication ports, which is RS-232, RS-485, or Ethernet. So suppose I have a PLC, which I will connect to my device in the future videos, and that PLC will send the tags to this device, and then this OPC UA server will assign a unique name to these tags, which you can, use, which you can access using OPC Client. So this is a very good example, which we are going to see in the future videos that how this OPC US server will read the information from the controllers. So I'll be using a Delta PLC and I'll be using a Siemens PLC to read the information. And then this OPC US server can further send this information to wherever client uh, requested, whichever client will request it. So currently you can see that the status is stopped. So you can also enable it. So once you enable the OPC US server, this is the OPC UA endpoint. So this is the main link or you can say that information you need to access to the server and that's the port number we will come back to this when we are going to set up a device for this OPC UA and similarly you can edit the nodes you can define the certificates and you can discover your device and some advanced features and last but not the least is the communication now suppose if you connect few PLCs with this device you can see the PLC here so right now it says no device found because we haven't linked any device so to link the device you have to link this device in easy builder pro the software and then you have to download it here so that you can see your device here all right perhaps we will do that in our future videos about interlinking this device with Siemens and Delta PLC and there will be more interesting videos coming up after this video. So if you have any questions, you can write me a comment. So this is a basic introduction about Windex CNP G01 IIoT device. So thank you for watching. If you have any question, you can comment on this video and you will find the links for this user manual, which I've shown you here and link of this device in the video description as well. So see you in the next video.